Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Witcher Season 2. Well, this is a show that had one season already at eight episodes. This is season two, another eight episodes. Right off the bat, I'll say it's better than season one. I did do a podcast on season one. It's created by Lauren Schmidt Hisrich, and it stars Henry Cavill, Freya Allen, Amon Farron, and a whole list of others. You know, getting to this point, finally watching the season, um, primed to watch so much stuff, and um, I gotta say I enjoyed it. But this show is not good at certain things. I don't think it's accomplishing what it wants to do. Now, I try to balance this out also as my love for certain genres, or I wasn't a big Witcher fan. So I got brought into this universe, so to speak, by a friend of mine who, when discussing playing D&D, he would enjoy playing a Witcher. And I just went online, looked around. Then I started doing the books that came out and all the cutscenes from the video games. And I got an idea of everything, and I said, oh, this will be okay, I'll, I'll make a Witcher campaign, and I have, and we've been playing. So I'm not the first person to latch on to something that's, oh, I am the first person, actually, like, um, if you talk about the Wheel of Time, which I thought was great, I'm sure people will find flaws in that, which it wasn't perfect. And maybe here I can isolate a couple of the issues I had and discuss them, but it tries to fix what it did in the first one. The first season had a non-linear storyline. It was confusing as fuck, and it had its moments. But I am all for this genre, this type of story. And I'm like a, you know, a little kid reading comic books, playing D&D. This is definitely for me. And on that, I enjoyed it. But I'm going through the episodes and I'm finding that they don't do certain things well. And I might use Game of Thrones as a standard, even though I'm not a big fan of the show. Fucking silly, right? But when you watch Game of Thrones and you watch any of the extras or any of the people in the sides peripherally and they come into the show or they start be, you know, they give more to do. It's always insane quality. I think this show is missing out on that. And when you make certain people look so good with really good looking armor and stuff, you'll notice that the budget maybe is lacking in other areas. That is the technically nitpicks because, like I said, this, this season is better than the first. I had a lot of fun. But you're doing storylines and... People don't do them well when they're split and they don't connect right away. So one of the problems I had with Game of Thrones was I just got bored and, you know, was not interested no more. I don't want to follow certain characters that, that just don't appeal to me or don't tell a story that's carrying me and, you know, engrossing me, immersing me in the world. And, you know, um, I've said some good things about Game of Thrones because it's the... You know, benchmark, it's great quality, and it's something that righted itself. And this show can do that. However, when you look at the past, and you look at shows that are given like a 22-episode first season, well, let's talk about Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, one of my favorite shows ever. Man, it had a rocky first season. Uh, Supernatural, or Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, sometimes you do need to get your legs, and I don't know if eight episodes per season is gonna do it and i don't mean for me i mean in general this feels feels like a show that can be canceled that you'll hear about not coming back and you've got such spectacular special effects mixed in with some halfway decent ones and if you do it right and you film it right 
it works. And the show improved on that, without a doubt. But you've also got a rhythm, and you've got super action, and you've got some other things that just don't blend well with the tone and the, the ride I'm on. And maybe it's a balance of the directors. Um, season one didn't have the same director for everyone. And season two, same thing. Although, you might see like somebody doing more than one. You know, the first person does the first two. Then the next person does the next two. And maybe it's that. Maybe it's a coordination and there's still problems with pandemic and people go into sets and I get it. But you've got this monster hunter story which they've totally neglected and that's fine this is someone's vision of you know what the witcher is going to be and i don't see the getting jobs and going on missions element anymore it's a direct storyline that is following the destiny of siri and all the the main new power in the continent is to keep mentioning continent, which is so leading to where are the other continents and what are they doing? Cause they mentioned so much in this episode. So it's centered around Siri, the sort of daughter of his, that he's going to protect. And Yennefer is in there, but they're not connected right away. And, but when you're doing um, real serious monster stuff and this and that, and you got a little bit of levity in there, you bring the bard back here and there, your other stuff starts to feel like non It's just like trivial. It's There's no real meat and potatoes to it. And if it had growth and real character building that I enjoyed, I would have liked it more. Where it's a balance, it's like, oh, uh, I, I see Yennefer's journey, and but the Nilfgaard gen- general guy, I didn't give a fuck about, still don't. I don't find it very um, engaging, and and it's got that permeating throughout the show because it's got to show uh, politics of this place and that, and I get turned off by that in this show for some reason. As it really did in Game of Thrones, because I just never bothered. After season three, I couldn't take it no more. Um, and it's the uh, promise of these great moments that keep me going, and the love of <clears throat> what I'm seeing. You know, Monster Hunter, very Dungeons and Dragons like, and it's like missed opportunities there. So although I like the first season. I'm aware of its faults, and it's really screwed things up in the way it decided to do things, telling stories from different times, and this one tried to write at least a flashback where he's seeing something that's happening in the flashback, but he's in the frame, kind of watching the scene in his mind. A little improvement there, but I don't feel the quality spread out evenly. Because Henry Cavill's amazing. And, um, uh, Freya Allen is amazing. It's gotten so much better. Um, Anya, what is it? Charlotra as Yennefer. Outstanding. But you cut to people and places, and I don't feel the weight anymore. I don't feel the presence of an immediate storyline that you're focusing on and then blurring it starts to blur the lines everywhere so you you start combining seeing other people that's not with the main storyline I'm, I'm not too invested that maybe it's the good actor bad actor right person for the role and the storyline is like it's starting to get blurred and jumbled and i'm not really sure what's going on and there's new people, and if you don't set these things up right, it's kind of a mismatch, and that's what I'm getting at here. I'm so enjoying the fights, the monsters, the destiny angle, that 
as I'm watching it in its own contained story is doing its own rhythm. And we've got to watch that perspective from a new groupish in a way. And then it's got to jump from that to politics to who's, what's Jennifer doing. And this is tough to do. And I think the show is not doing it super well. However, just like I mentioned with Buffy, it's improving and it's getting better. I'll compare this to The Mandalorian in the sense that there are so many flaws and there's so much bullshit going on in The Mandalorian from whatever, but it's a fun ride. And those things go to the wayside. Maybe someone who does it for a living or analyzes movies and stuff is going to pick out everything and tell you why, you know, this is that. But you're having fun, you're enjoying it subjectively, whatever. It's a, just a fun ride. This for me is that also, but I'm also aware that it's missing these opportunities to really nail it down. I can't think of a great episode. That's, that's kind of tough. Like, I'll go through Buffy season one, two, three. I'll make you a list of some of the most outstanding episodes and award winning or the consistency has gotten, you know, so much better over the seasons. Supernatural's been going for, what, 14, 15 fucking seasons? And it's tough to get through the first season, to get through the nonsense that they're doing. But if it comes together, I think this can do that. And it's poised to do it well. But I don't know enough of the backstory, and as I'm piecing this together, it's not making some sense to me. In a way, I wouldn't do the Child's uh, series major confrontation with a certain thing i don't like to give spoilers and stuff but you poise it on her between balancing wanting to be like a witcher she's got to learn how to protect herself and do her thing to i have an ancient power that's going to be manipulated in the second season and brought to fruition and then we're gonna carry back on with like, you know, it, it feels disjointed in that way. Now, not in the same way as a non-linear fucking first season where me and my friends just kept looking at each other and I would pause and go, okay, so this is the... And we would just like having these conversations and it grew frustrating. This is not that. It's got a better feel. It's got a more, um, you know, obvious path that you're taking with a little bit of surprises here and there, or they try to. You're seeing people you love who just were in the first episodes, like, you know, series and grandmother, that whole situation. It's such, it was so good. And to see them again. But they have these moments where you've got Geralt, uh, Henry Cavill's character, The Witcher, and he's oozing this character, his, his fighting, his stances, his looks, his... Um, I mean, if you don't know, the characters, the witches are known to have, to have their emotions taken from them during the process of making a witcher. And there are hints here and there that it's there. They just tamp it down really well and are able to control it. But they do feel, they do have anger, hate, you know. I just, you know, I get a little bit of worry when I watch an episode a season like this because like the first season you have a mess a beautiful mess you know and this season you're, you're right in your footsteps but even if you compare it to a first season of Buffy it's only 16 episodes and I don't know if that's what's work that works these days I just want to see this show hit its high moments know what it's doing well and focus on it because if you take that style and that rhythm they have and you apply it to everything else, it'd be better, I think. And like I said, you have these Geralt awesome moments and interactions and you got this Siri who's grown into this character so much. I love her. And they do decide to do a, to culminate the second season in a, a fashion that was like my mind was mind boggling where. 
Um, it's, 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 it's like a possession, let's call it, right? And um, it just doesn't go the way I wanted it to. It would have entertained me so much more. Where they're doing the battle between, <clears throat> um, do we kill her to kill the possession, the entity, and getting through to her to fight back within herself? I mean, we've seen it tons of times, right? And the way it's trying to balance that is, you know, movie magic. I get it. And it varies and subjective. But when I'm watching that and I'm watching a monster bite off people's faces and their heads, and then you have the bard make a joke as they cut back to the guy taking the medallions off the guy's chewed off face. I, I you know, I wonder where you have people in a room that say, no, let's switch this up. Let's make this joke come in before he's, and then, then he's a guest, like oh, what, what actually happened here. Those little meetings you have in your rooms when you're doing these episodes, like, I think they're important. I don't know how well they're being, you know, given weight because someone just might be in charge who makes the decisions. Now, again, I'm some schmuck in Brooklyn, New York. Yes, I consider myself maybe a writer, some talent or whatever, but I've never written shows and, you know, no one's bought a script of mine, even my animated TV show or my, you know, anything I have ideas. So, look, I'm just kind of riffing here about what I like and what I perceive to be things. You know, it could be a different case. Like, it could be three of the actors who were never on set. You know, you find out certain things. Fine. Um... And is it going to be successful? I think so, but is that worry that you're doing so much so well and it's not, it's still not a great mix. The mix doesn't feel like it's done right. Like every time you taste the batter, you got to add some. This has got to be, hopefully, it keeps on a course correction that makes the show even better and better. So, season one of The Witcher, I liked a lot, but it's a beautiful mess. Season 2 of The Witcher is an improvement, but there's, in my opinion, glaring flaws that are going to have to be smoothed out. Now, I'll say this, that the ending, let's say the teaser from the ending of Season 2 to what's going to happen, was kind of interesting, and it could focus what they need to do. It could... Well, maybe this is a sacrifice. Like, we had to do this for two seasons, and this is going to be the um, new way forward. And that'll be great. It'll actually, you can look back on first two seasons and recommend it. Like, I have this thing with my friend. Um, we talk about how hard it is to get through season one. I'm like, and then once he got through season one and two, you, you could feel um, you're on the ride. You've got the elements and they, they're working for you. And even that, it's like, you know, it's like the best fucking show. But look, 15 fucking seasons is a reason for that. A good formula, the right pacing of things. The right way to bring things back. To introduce new things. I mean, I got a guy in the season two who shaves, and then he's the fucking greatest fire mage ever. Like, I, I don't, you know, and he's deeply involved in this. And I kind of knew... If you could just feel what was going to happen, so I kind of guessed certain things, and that's fine. But this balance, this mixture, you know, you, you have to reassess it. So when you pour the batter and you make season one, you do this, you mix it up, you ingredients, then you do season two, um, this is, this is going to improve, and I really do feel that way. I think there's a lot of great things about this ep season. Um, like I said, it's hard to nail things down when I could blurt out amazing episodes from Star Trek, Buffy, Angel, um, X-Files. I mean, all the shows that I would consider great, even ones that I've done stupid podcasts on, like, uh, one season, The Good Guys, which is a comedy buddy cop thing. These, these things jump out at you, and this show doesn't do that for me. It has insane moments with... Flashes of greatness mixed in with mundane 
uneven pacing. And that is maybe a great way to tell a story for a lot of people. I could be in a minority. I just could be, like I said, just in a lot of right frame of mind. And, you know, what's going on in my life? I mean, I need something a little. Bit. But then again, I look at the wheel of time and I got to acknowledge my biases. I might argue or debate that season one of Wheel of Time is better than season one of The Witcher. I wouldn't compare it to season two because it's, you know, season two is getting this late. I want to see where the Wheel of Time is going. But is my love of the Wheel of Time novels, I read them all for years over and over, um, you know, giving me blinders to its major flaws. And I hope I'm honest enough and objective enough to actually look at these things. And as I do my podcast and I express that, that I'm trying to be neutral. I'm trying to recognize my subjective love for something and a sort of objective values that we hold and go, okay, no, no, you need a little less time of this political thing and jump back. No, keep it in mind and don't cut it from the show, but let's, let's put this in chunks that we could give the viewers enough excitement and when it's time to breathe, you breathe and you go into it, not mixing it and cutting and, you know, forgetting that five minutes ago, it was, you know, one type of feeling and theme you're conveying. And it just feels like I keep getting on and off the ride. I go a little bit, I come back. It's, it's difficult and I'm not saying it's easy, but I am saying season two of The Witcher is a recommendation. It's an improvement from the first. I just want to come on here and just, Without a major, you know, I'm doing a live show where we're, people are coming in for the show just to talk about this, where I might point out things more. This is just, you know, uh, you know, my impressions of things as a, you know, moron from Brooklyn. But I turn the mic on, I pull the trigger, and I just talk about it. So I think we could say that this is an improvement and I'm glad for it, but there is a worry in me. There's still that just thing that keeps telling me you've got Henry Cavill. I mean, you've got some excellent actors and performers. You know, maybe you have a budget of a certain amount. Use it well. Do it smart. Because when you have someone who looks... Look, let me put it this way. I'll compare good, because this was um something I remembered from the Wheel of Time, which I recommend it. If you have certain scenes and everybody has subpar wardrobe, you can set it up where it looks right. But the second someone comes into the frame with better wardrobe or a better this or that, it's noticeable. And I'm not saying guys wearing cloth doing farming and a guy comes in with armor and that different. No, I'm talking about... Um, Two people wearing the same outfit and one is clearly clearly inferior. That sort of thing where you're looking, you're wearing the same thing, but oh no, oh it was made. So and even in that, um improvements can be made. But you've got a great story of a protector protecting your somewhat daughter figure. You've done your two seasons of um you know, weird storytelling and how to get to a point. You've had the first major trials, because I wouldn't say the first season was a trial, but the second season is a trial for all of them on how they come together and we see a direction for season three. And I'm really pumped for it. I'm excited because it looks like it'll do a lot of the course correction that I think it, it needed. And we'll see where it goes from there. But this could be one of those, oh, it had a, you know, rough first two seasons, still worth watching, still enjoyable. Henry Cavill, his performances are great. Siri, Yennefer, like it's working well. You know, you got the main things right. It's not like glaring bullshit. But every once in a while, I just sit there and go, man, what a missed opportunity. You know, you just could have framed this better and, you know, kept this a little more in rhythm. Uh, let this breathe a little more. Cut that a little short. And these are just the things that I, I notice, but I feel compelled to say when I turn on my fucking mic, because this would be just, oh, I'm a D&D freak, swords and magic, I love it, I love it. And again, speaking of swords and magic, there's more of that. You've got training, and you learn about the witch's signs, they call them, which 
they're not doing that well. And the fact that um, it seems that training in here is just someone telling you the right words to say. And it's a weird thing, but I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see someone is learning something about magic and spell casting and you're learning a little bit more about how the witches were made and why they were made. And I think there's a fucking preview movie or a show coming on about this. You gotta be careful. Like, when I see a promo for Blood Origins from The Witcher, and I just came off watching season two, I'm going, guys, you're not ready. Like, you want, I don't know, four seasons of solid awesomeness? Even if the first two are still a little less quality, it shows the um, progression and the achievements they made and the uh, course correction that they did. You could look back on it as a whole and still be like, wow. Uh, got a new sh now, I can understand animated tie-ins and comic books and video game, all that stuff. It's part, of its, it's part of the franchise. It's part of the mix that goes in. And I'm just oblivious to some of it, fine. I did make an effort to look here and there. I don't know. I think this is um, a quality show that is improving, that has improved. But just like the love of the Mandalorian and loving it for what it is, you see the flaws and they need this to be smoothed out a little. And look at me tell, talking about the Mandalorian like it's not considered one of the best fucking shows ever. I'm going to lean a little bit towards that fucking Star Wars to shit on everything so much as a breath of fresh air. However, The Witcher... Uh, Video game franchise, Poland, I think, or Polish. Um, spawning some books to feed the law. Um, we've got, you know, there's a portion that I'm missing out on because I wasn't there from the beginning. I try to do my due diligence and, you know, look through, and this is like using something from a certain book and another book or another storyline, and it's combined them. It's not easy, I, you know, I, I'm going to guess it's not easy. And I guess I'll just end this here in saying The Witcher Season 2, totally recommended, an improvement from Season 1. If you like Season 1, you're really going to enjoy this. It looks like it had to sacrifice and do things to make the end of Season 2 happen, to start there, and I think it's a great indication of where the show is going. I think the show is going to be really good to amazing. Because I'd like to say season one was good, you know, the floor of season two I liked a lot, you know, a lot more. And it's all, but this show can be one of those. Look at the improvements. Look how polished and awesome it is. And I think that's where it's going. That's where my hope is going. I'm not feeling bad about that. Like I didn't come away from season two going a lot. So many. It all balanced out in a way where it left me, you know, and rolling my eyes like Picard. I give no fucks about Picard. About how that fucking show was structured, the story they told, anything. Bullshit. So I give no fucks. I do care about The Witcher. I'm more immersed. I'm more into it. Um, kudos to everybody who's making it work. And that's it. Watch The Witcher, season one and two. We've got 16 episodes to binge now if you haven't watched it. It's got the elements there. Just, you know, it's getting better. And as you watch it, I think you'll see the improvement. You might want to get a fucking website up to watch season one, no, because you don't know what the fuck is going on with the going back and forth. But the heart of this story is being told really well. I just think they needed to get here, and it is a trade-off between compromise and you know, little things that I'm pointing out. They just have to be done, and you have to get it done. You have to do this balance that they're doing now, and then we're going to go in a different direction. And for that, I'm excited. So. There we are. The Witcher Season 2. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye-bye.